For so long, fear kept me from taking on dialects. I got over that fear. Now, I'm gonna help you master the dialects. We're going down under today. Mason, let's do the Australian accent. All right then. In Australia, the resonance is further back by the soft palate where the uvula is up there. You get a vibration in the nasal cavity. You're also feeling a vibration in the back of the cranium. Flare the nostrils to get that nasal sound. As we go over the vowel changes, keep in mind that a lot of the changes come from lowering the tongue, the back part of the soft palate. Let's start with the first one. The E sound goes to the uh E. Keep that tongue back. For instance, B's knees becomes B's knees. Oo goes to uh oo. Like gloomy and moon go to gloomy moon. That's right. The gloomy moon is up in the sky there. The long A goes to the long I. Abel goes to Ibel. Whereas the long I goes to the oi sound. Keep the lips rounded as you say something like bright. Bright. You got a bright smile there. I see it. The long O goes to ow. It's not quite as extreme as the Cockney accent. Take a word like broken. It becomes broken. Short O goes to aw. Like hot and obstinate become hot, obstinate. When the O gives off the aw sound in words before an NG or an F or an OS or an OTH, it goes to the short O. Like toss and song become toss, song. The aw sound goes to an exaggerated aw sound. Like awful and cause become awful, cause. Shorty becomes a short I. Twenty becomes twenty. In so many cases, the A sound goes to the ah sound. For instance, when it precedes the TH, like bath and path become both, path. If you don't take a both, you're gonna smell bad. That's right. When it precedes the F sound, after and affable go to after, affable. Also, when it's before the NT sound, can't and rant go to can't, rant. The A also goes to the ah sound before NS, but only in the British dialect. It's different with the Australian accent. The A now becomes an aya in words like man's hands. That man has big hands. The ow sound goes to the e ow sound. Brown, south become brown, south. The R really becomes a factor in the Australian dialect. It gets an aw sound. For instance, mart, park, clerk become mart, park, clock. That's right. The medial R and the terminal R are both dropped. For instance, earnest and player become earnest, player. That's right. The player was too earnest. He missed the shot. Or goes to oa. For instance, door and poor become door, poor. Ear changes to ea. For instance, fear and weird become fear, weird. Simple. Air goes to ea. Where is the bear would be where, bear. Where's the bear? Is it over there? It's like that. Ur goes to ua. Endure and sure become endure. Sure. You gonna endure the tour? You sure can. When an R is between two vowels, whether it's within the same word or two different words, you don't get the R sound to replace it. You keep the R. Parachute or the car is in the garage. Parachute. Put the car in the garage. All right, let's get into the isolated changes. The glottal stop. You basically eliminate the T. It becomes an uh sound. Gentleman and citizen become 
gentlemen, citizen. The glottal stop applies at the end of words too. Fought and shot become shot. Fought. He shouldn't have fought. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gotten shot. T goes to the D. For instance, latter and batter become ladder, batter. A lot of people are tempted, but don't drop the G in the ing endings. Keep it there. Baking and playing stay at. Baking, playing. In standard American English, we usually get lazy with the E sound. In America, we say, I've been there. But in Australia, we say, oh, I've been there. We also tend to give the A sound, the short E sound, against becomes against. All right, here's a list of rapid fire fun changes. Garage becomes garage. Neither and either go to neither. Either. Process. Process. Missile and hostile. Missile. Hostile. I say tomato. I say tomato. Australians do what the British do. They drop that vowel at the end of words, such as necessary, laboratory, commissary. They all become commissary, necessary, laboratory. There you go. Now, if you want to take on the New Zealand dialect, just do what we've been doing, but lower the tongue further back in the soft palate and keep that nasal sound. And then all of a sudden, you got the New Zealand dialect. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and make comments. Also, if you want a PDF and hard copy of what we went over today, go to the website creativeleaptv.com, and then you can follow along as you watch the video, and you'll really start to master these. Click right up there for some more videos by the dialect guru. Thanks for coming out, Mason. No worries, mate. See you next time. Goodbye.